The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I'm your host and your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction, and fiction you may think is reality. And we come to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern on the Talkstar Radio Network and our fine family of broadcasters throughout Canada. The U.S., Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, 20 Asian countries, and across Europe. If you'd like to give us a call tonight, our toll-free number is one 528 8255 That's toll-free, one 528 8255 My email address is xzone at talkstarradio.com. You can chat with us here in our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on MSN Messenger at TalkStarRadio at Hotmail.com. And our website's www.XZoneRadio.com. That is our main site. XZoneTV.com is where you can watch and listen to us live from the broadcast from 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. And our merchandise website at XZoneStore.com. On tonight's show, Lieutenant Eric Schein is going to be my first guest in a few minutes. I I have a lot of respect for the lieutenant. What he talks about is real. It's not fiction. It's not science fiction. It's not a story that you would read that has no bearing, reality, or truth behind it. It is 100% true. So when you're listening to the good lieutenant in a few minutes, what you are hearing is 100% truth. It is not fiction. It is not a hypothetical situation. It is not a possibility. It is reality. 100% reality. 100% truth. It is. And we will talk to the lieutenant in a few minutes. Dalton Walker is our guest in the second hour. A very strange and unusual rock is in his possession. And Dalton sent us a series of images of the rock and documentation, and we have put it up at a special website at www.xzone-radio.com forward slash Dalton dot htm. In the next hour, Dalton will be joining us, and we're going to be going through the entire series of photos and documentation that he has sent us to prove his point that the rock that he has is a big mystery. That's in hour number two. Hour number three, Paul Wright will be joining me. We're going to be talking about prison profiteers. You know, and these are people uh, who make money from the prison system because it's going to be privatized. And in hour number four, psychic, clairvoyant, and author Dougal Fraser is going to be with us, and he's going to be giving us you, the Exo Nation, readings allowing you to take a glimpse into your future. And all you have to do to speak to Dougal is give us a call at one 528 8255 My producer tonight at Master Control is the one and only Green Hornet. Hey, Green Hornet, nice working with you. How's Kato? And the rest of the little Kyotos. Good to hear that. All right, next up, first up, Lieutenant Eric Shine. As I said in the intro, what you are about to hear is real. It affects each and every one of us. It affects our freedom. It affects democracy. It affects the government. 
It has a lot to do with the European Union and the North American Union. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the X-Zone, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Live from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, exclusively on the Talkstar Radio Network, X-Zone TV, and on Shortwave. I'll be back in two minutes. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Welcome back, everyone. Lieutenant Eric Schein is my special guest. The lieutenant was with us Wednesday night on the first hour, and I received a number of uh, emails over the last couple of days thanking the Exxon uh, for bringing on Lieutenant Schein, and each and every email was sent back saying, no, it's, Lut- it's the Exxon who thanks Lieutenant Schein for coming on the show. Today we are facing despots in government who, under the blanket of national security, are prosecuting civilians before a series of military tribunals. Contrary to military tradition, prosecuting uh, tradition, the U.S. Coast Guard is succeeding in its, um, its excess by declaring itself to be a branch of the military that can arrest, carry on detention, prosecute, adjudicate, and even punish civilians. Lieutenant Eric Schein is a case in point. The lieutenant is being charged with being depressed. The 46-year-old former merchant marine and whistleblower is being hauled in front of a military tribunal and charged with nothing more than a state of mind, with no allegations of misconduct or negligence in his actions. Lieutenant Shine has been subjected to years of harassment and legal proceedings ever since he wrote his reports on malfeasance of government contractors working on a ship of which he was an officer. Besides losing both of his homes, he has been stripped of his office and has not had the benefit of legal representation owed to him. Lieutenant Eric Shine's background reads as a packet of pedigrees. His father and brother attended West Point. 
He himself graduated with honors from Kings Point, the sister academy to West Point, and Annapolis, where his uncle attended. And uh, Lieutenant Eric Schein, again, thank you very much for coming on the show tonight, sir. It's a great privilege having you here. And as I said in the intro, we have received numerous emails uh, thanking us for having you on. And I said, no, it is we who thank the lieutenant for coming on. So thank you very much for being with us again tonight, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, one thing I would uh, ask uh, as well of your listeners is to start to contact Congressman Cummings. He's a Democrat from Maryland. He's the chair of the Coast Guard and Marine Transportation Subcommittee. They're actually making moves now, and they're tying it to the budget for the Coast Guard uh, under Homeland Security. Uh, they're holding up their budget, uh, not passing the budget, and tying this new legislation to it, which is to dismantle this court system that the Coast Guard is using to prosecute civilians under this branch of military. So it's getting some movement, and from what I understand, President Bush is going to veto this. Uh, so this is, a, you know, this is a huge issue. It's getting some very serious attention. We have some heavy hitters who are playing in all this. A lot of it goes to federal contracting violations, Mm -hmm. where they're using the Coast Guard to prosecute whistleblowers. They're using the Coast Guard's uh, ALJ system, administrative law judge system, that was set up for its own civil service employees in the Coast Guard, because the Coast Guard is supposed to be a civil service agency, a, a maritime police law enforcement agency. It's not a branch of military. It's not supposed to be a branch of military. You don't get life-saving and lighthouse services and revenue cutter marine and rum runner service and turn it into a special branch of military somehow um, unless you know I, I throw out some terms but you know un unless you've got a Prussian or uh, somehow a Germanic or even English English uh, background uh, to where you've come into the United States and have taken systems that were intended for civil defense, and to some extent national security. You know, our lighthouses is a portion of our uh, commercial and civil transportation system, but it's also there for, in times of war, uh, for our own forces and people, but also we need to protect it so it can't be used against us. But what's happened is the Queen of England, or that family, that royal family, and many of the other royal families from Europe, have started to and have been meddling in American affairs uh, since the Revolutionary War. I mean, we had forts here with British soldiers into the 1800s. Uh, you know, they didn't leave like in 1776 when we declared our independence. Uh, when you look at who and what J.P. Morgan was and what his corporation is now and what his heir apparents are doing, uh, he came to the United States just before the Civil War helped fund and incite the Civil War. Uh, his father was an English banker who helped fund him, and uh, he profited greatly off of both sides of the Civil War. And he also set up the very same type of scams uh, around the Civil War and taking over some financial houses, uh, the very same thing that J.P. Morgan is doing now here in the United States with Bear Stearns. And when you start to look at all our history and realize that this is all about a bunch of self-appointed royal families who have, you know, anytime you hear globalization, replace, replace that term with United Kingdom. That's what all this is about. They want to come in in the North American Union, much like you had uh, alluded to in the introduction, the EEC, uh, the, Euro the European economic community that eventually devolved, and I say devolved into because the European Union, uh, you've taken all of these very warlike countries, Italy, Spain, Germany, Bavaria, Austria, mm -hmm. Prussia, Russia. Russia's not really in the European Union yet, but they're kind of sitting out there on the uh, fringe looking at all this stuff going on. Uh, uh, England and more, Spain. Now they're all one, and they've done basically what the Roman Empire couldn't do and had troubles doing and, and holding together for a very long time. Uh, now it is one country, it is one union, 
they're doing the same thing or trying to do the same thing here in the United States and to uh, create the North American Union, and this is not, you know, fiction. Uh, if you pick up a book, The Shield of Achilles by Philip Bobbitt, and look at I read, I think, on the last show, you know, uh, his uh, bio yes. and also some of the comments uh, that he said in there about, you know, quote-unquote, the creation of the market state. Well, the market state is where NAFTA, uh, the North American Free Trade Agreement, is the new constitution. All right, so we, we know that the president of the, uh, the U.S., the prime minister of Canada, and the president of Mexico met recently in exactly. um, in New Orleans. We also know that last September they met in, um, in, in Quebec at Montebello. We know that meetings have been going on for some time. We also know that a new, a new pact has been signed between the U.S. government and the Canadian government that if the U.S. was to ask the Canadian government to send over armed forces to help um, quell down civil disorder, that the Canadian government would send in the army, and the same would apply to the Canadian government requesting the United States Army coming into Canada. I right. know for a fact that during Montebello, it was the United States Army that was responsible for close security, and the RCMP and Canadian Armed Forces were secondary security. We also know that during a pre, uh, during a recent uprising with the First Nations in Caledonia, Ontario, members of the U.S. Border Patrol were working with the Ontario Provincial Police. We also know that members of Homeland Security are now being posted on Canadian Coast Guard cutters. Right. Well, you know, and, and no, and what's important about that, too, is Homeland Security and the Coast Guard. The Coast Guard, you've heard of the uh, School of the Americas, right? Yes. Uh, it, I'm trying to think of the new name. It's the, uh, I should know this off the top of my head, but it, it, the name of it has actually changed. But the School of the Americas was training assassins for South America, not just Central America, but South America, Argentina, mm -hmm. and more. Uh, many of the programs that Negro Ponte was running as U.S. ambassador in Central America, Honduras, Guatemala, El Salvador, uh, we think of Iran, Contra, Reagan, and more. Uh, you start to look at all of this and realize uh, Ronald Reagan was knighted by the Queen of England. So was George Herbert Walker Bush, Kissinger, Greenspan, Colin Powell, Schwarzkopf, Giuliani, the first U.S. Coast Guard Commandant, Berthold, uh, knighted by the King of England. And being knighted is a war prize. It's not a peace prize. It's not the Nobel Peace Prize. It's a war prize. And these guys have come into the United States, spat on our Declaration of Independence, spat on our Constitution, spat on the rule of law, and they are spitting on the American people. Everything that we are feeling, everything that we are seeing is coming from and driven. It may feel like it's coming from Wall Street, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's coming from Europe through Wall Street. Sure, they're using Wall Street, just like J.P. Morgan and their ties to Bear Stearns. One of the individuals in my own situation, and I, and I put out this plea not to only contact Congressman Cummings, but other congressmen and senators in your area and get word out and ask for immediate hearings in this regard because we are being betrayed on a grand scale. Our defense systems are being taken down intentionally. They are crashing the gates from within. Much of what is going on with the Coast Guard is involved in this. Programs like Tempest, which goes to secure communications, the Coast Guard was building cutters to where Tempest and Secure Communications was actually emanating Secure Communications because they hadn't installed the systems properly, which means that this would bleed out in a time of war when it becomes, you know, much beyond what we're seeing now uh, to where it's full-on, you know, all-out all warfare, uh, to where the Coast Guard would be emanating Secure Communications that could be picked up by the enemy. And when you look into who Admiral Allen is and what he's been up to, not only with the military tribunals and more, but married to Pamela Hess, who is related to Rudolf Hess, former deputy Führer, uh, and you look at uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, who's an Austrian, you know, who has not renounced his Austrian citizenship, 
who is now in charge of the largest economy here in the United States and the fifth largest in the world, and if you think he's any lover of peace, look at what Ronald Reagan did. Lieutenant, we have to take our news break. Uh, Please stand by. Lieutenant Eric Schein is our special guest. And the lieutenant will be with me on the other side of the news. If you'd like to give us a call, one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My name is Rob McConnell, and this is the X Zone right here on the Talk Star Radio Network. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember, 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to the Exxon. This portion of the Exxon is being brought to you by Karen Bentley's A Sugar-Free Miracle Diet. How to beat the sweets, add back the fat, and be skinny ever after. For more information on Karen Bentley's Sugar-Free Miracle Diet, visit her website, at www.sugarfreemiracle.com. That's www.sugarfreemiracle.com. Lieutenant Eric Schein is our special guest. And, uh, Lieutenant, one of our listeners would like to know if you yourself have ever received any threats because of you being a whistleblower and going public with this information. Yes, of course. I mean, they've had... One of the things they did, as I'm being prosecuted for, quote-unquote, being depressed, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and they're putting out bolos on me saying that I may be dangerous, holding me in detention in a hotel room for eight months, uh, stripping me of everything, uh, attacking me while I'm in my home, uh, you know, playing games as far as shutting off water and just power. I mean, everything. One, One thing after another, everything and anything they could do to attack me personally, they did. They even uh, hired... Uh, a diabetic who had a, a bracelet on his uh, wrist from Maryland, where my Federal Officers Association has its power base. This guy drives out in a rental car. Uh, he's not supposed to be driving in the first place. He has a sleeping bag in his car, uh, potato chips, and a bunch of other stuff. And he takes this car right into and creams my 1955 Chevy pickup that I had. Uh, takes it, puts it up on the curb, plants his own car up underneath it. I had to, I'm sitting inside my house uh, at the time on quote-unquote Law Street, uh, which is kind of, you know, ironic with everything that's going on. I uh, hear this, you know, bang, this loud bang from the collision go out, and I have to uh, render first aid to this individual. The ambulance comes along, and as I'm looking at, you know, the car and vehicle and what's in it and the plates and his, drivers, you know, all this stuff, I'm just going like, man, unbelievable. I cannot believe, and that's just one of the many things that's gone on, but I've also had uh, people in the midst of all this uh, tell me, you know, other federal officers uh, uh, tell me to take a gun to my head and blow myself away, and that's the kind of stuff that's gone on. They just, uh, you know, one attack after another, putting a bolo out on me, uh, be on the lookout, uh, it's what they were using for terrorists or whatever when they found those um, 17 terrorists that I guess they never found. They just put out bolos on them to win an election or two. Uh, they used that on me. Uh, they forced counsel upon me, uh, who was actually representing the uh, 
shipping companies, risk managers, or a risk manager for the shipping companies that I had gone after in federal district court uh, because of the federal contracting violations. And uh, no, these guys are um, ruthless. I've had uh, people like um, Ted Olson, his law firm. Ted Olson, uh, his wife Barbara Olson, died on one of the 9/11 planes. Yes. Uh, he represented George Bush against Al Gore at the Supreme Court. He was appointed Solicitor General uh, by Bush. Uh, this guy's as dirty as they come, and his law firm uh, went after me in the midst of all this and represented one of the shipping companies called Matson, uh, who's involved in uh, stealing the uh, Hawaiian Islands from the Hawaiians way back about 100 some odd years ago. Um, some very old money, very old families very European in um, their lineage and their background, uh, not just Ted Olson, uh, guys like Andrew Card, who went to my academy at Kings Point, uh, he's been involved. He was the Secretary of Transportation under the first Bush. Uh, he was uh, Chief of Staff to the second Bush. Uh, he helped set up much of this stuff in the United States Merchant Marine that's going on, where now 97% of our fleet, our international fleet, is foreign flagged. Ninety-seven percent of all cargo coming into the United States is now carried on foreign flag vessels. Uh, that's not a good place because these vessels are, quote-unquote, floating U.S. embassies. They're considered sovereign soil when under American flag. They come under our laws. Uh, they're manned by our people, uh, normally federal maritime officers. Uh, they come under our laws, rules, and regulations. And even our cruise ship industry is the same thing. They're all foreign flag. And rather than having our vessels going to other nations under our flag and under our protections, under our constitution, as an embassy to other countries representing and presenting ourselves in a peaceful fashion, mm -hmm. we now have all these foreign flag embassies coming into and sitting in our ports, which is not a very good thing as far as uh, uh, national defense or civil defense and national security, uh, because, uh, you know, a weapon of mass destruction makes it in a container, it's too mm -hmm. late. You know, you, I, you know, you and I touched on this uh, briefly last time you were with us, Lieutenant. Is this, as Connie Fogel says, who is the president of the Canadian Action Party, she says this: these are acts of treason being committed. Yes, yes, yes. And I can't, you know, I don't know how much longer I'll be around because I keep uh, trying to, you know, get out. It, it, the one, the, the administrative law judge who's involved in my own situation. This is how deep this goes. This guy Brzezinski. Uh, he was involved in a bunch of lawsuits. Uh, uh, Dresser is one of the individuals down in uh, uh, New Orleans and uh, the South. Uh, but he's ruled on commerce cases involving Iran and blocking parts getting into Iran that would have kept oil on the market. Uh, uh, that's the level of individuals that I'm, I don't want to say playing with, but that are playing with me right now. He's also ruled on cases Rendon versus TSA, uh, uh, relating to the case, uh, the commerce case involving Iran and uh, oil embargo and uh, parts and more, mm -hmm. and fixing uh, world worldwide uh, oil prices, he also has a partner who speaks Farsi. Conveniently enough, uh, this individual is an ALJ, administrative law judge or military judge for the Coast Guard, and he's the one who's allowing the Coast Guard, as a branch of military, to prosecute me, not as a naval officer but as a civilian which is as unconstitutional as you can get. Uh, he's also ruled on a, on a case called Rendon versus TSA. Uh, TSA is the Transportation Security Administration. And uh, a TSA agent went through one of the uh, security lines, security checkpoints, mm -hmm. and uh, he was, you know, whether he's on duty or not, he's on duty. Uh, he's carrying his ID. He's a TSA agent. He goes through the line. Uh, I guess he sets off the metal detectors. They ask him to step aside so that they can go ahead and wand him and check him. And I guess he gets a little upset. He curses and drops the F-bomb, the F-word. Right. And, and he goes, uh, the police come over, they cite him $700 fine for cursing in an airport. This judge, Brzezinski, rules on it. He's the same judge involved in my own situation. He rules on it, upholds it, says that the $700 fine is just fine. Uh, it goes to the Sixth Circuit is converted to civil service side through the Sixth Circuit, and it, now anyone who goes in an airport, and they said that it was not a burden upon free speech, anyone who curses in a public transportation facility can be fined $700. This very same judge 
is also involved in the 9-11 trust fund cases with his uh, special master, Kenneth Feinberg, where they basically attacked the families who were injured, tried to keep as much money from them, minimize their claims, keep as much money in the trust fund as possible, and then pocket the balance in the trust fund. Wow. Right. And that's one of the individuals, just one of the individuals, along with Ted Olson, Andrew Carr, John Snow, he was the former Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, he was former, before that, CEO and President of uh, USMMI, Sealand, CSX. CSX is a rail and uh, shipping company. Uh, and he's involved in a lot of these enormous federal contracts and in taking down American shipping, American flag shipping here in the United States. And the Coast Guard, I was going to mention this before, I was talking about the uh, School of the Americas. The Coast Guard, and because you mentioned about um, Coast Guard uh, vessels up in uh, Canada. Yes. The, uh, when the School of the Americas didn't have enough room for its teachers who were teaching assassins for Central and South America to kill nuns, priests, teachers, political dissidents, common folk. Uh, when it didn't have enough room, they went to the Coast Guard, asked the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard said, sure, have an entire floor of our D.C. offices. And when you tie that with some of the information, like in Naomi Klein's book, The Shock Doctrine, it goes into University of Chicago, which has been a uh, hub for the mob for a very long time. Uh, one of the law firms that's involved in my own situation, Vetter Price, is also from Chicago, and it's a large corporate mob law firm. Uh, one of the, you know, there's five or six, not only Ted Olson's law firm, but then Better Price. My own union's law firm sat next to the shipping companies, the federal employers, federal contractors, those who signed general agencies with the United, or general agency agreements with the United States, become an arm or extension of the United States. The Federal Officers Association, or quote-unquote union, its counsel didn't sit next to me. It sat next to the shipping companies and federal contractors in federal district court. Tell me, when it comes to you, you mentioned briefly 9/11. What are you? What are you? What are your? What's your opinion on what happened on September the 11th? Complete inside job, no question about it. I'm, I'm an engineer. Uh, trained at one of the uh, uh, best schools in the United States. The graduates coming out of Kings Point are in the top four and a half percentile as having uh, graduates of as presidents, CEOs, chairman of the board of corporations. Uh, it's rated higher than MIT and Harvard. Uh, it's a you know uh, the uh, uh, admiral in charge of the fifth fleet over in the Gulf is a Kings Pointer. Uh, Andrew Card, who was chief of staff and secretary of transportation to both Bushes, uh, one and then the other, uh, he's a Kings Pointer. Uh, the caliber of the institution is, par, you know, bar none. Um, it, it, and, and coming out of there, not only with my engineering degree, being throughout the military industrial complex, working for General Electric, uh, working at sub base uh, in San Diego, working at Pearl Harbor uh, as a civil servant, and also over there uh, as a naval officer working on uh, repair of uh, nuke subs and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, looking at what happened on that day, just from a visual, you can't buy it. There's no way a steel frame building like that will come down like that. It's just impossible. I mean, to even think. Uh, and, and see, the problem is people get all caught up in that, too, in the physical um, activity that went on that day, and they miss behind the scenes things that happened, like uh, not only did they try to privatize the World Trade Center, with what's gone on with Silverstein and more, uh, but the World Trade Center had the inherent powers of eminent domain because it was a, uh, a public trust that was built. Uh, New York and New Jersey were involved. Federal government got involved. Uh, Department of Transportation got involved. Uh, Port Authority was created and more. Eminent domain came into play not only because they were coming in and seizing property, but because it was between two states. Uh, so it wasn't state uh, eminent domain, it was federal. Um, it had, like I said, the inherent powers of eminent domain and what they tried to do or have effectively done, and you see this even growing more and more today, 
with the uh, uh, housing crisis. And these are these are all attacks upon not only the American people, but the people of Canada and even Mexico. Mm-hmm. Uh, because even Attila the Hun and Genghis Khan knew that the best way to marshal your troops is to attack your citizens yourself and turn them into soldiers. But the World Trade Center had the inherent powers of eminent domain. Uh, what they tried to do was to pass and privatize those inherent powers of eminent domain with what they pulled with the World Trade Center. And lo and behold, uh, shortly thereafter, you had the decision of Kelo versus Connecticut, U.S. Supreme Court, which effectively did privatize the powers of eminent domain to where a government entity could come in, seize property, take it away from an individual if it increased the tax base, and then turn it over to private interests. Those are the kind of things with with the World Trade Center and 9/11, and not and that and the war, the militarism, uh, what Lockheed Martin is up to, integrated Coast Guard systems, what the Coast Guard is up to, converting the Coast Guard from uh, you know on March 1st, 2003, into a special branch of military somehow. All of these things go right to that. And at some point, these you know most criminals are opportunists, and this was not only a big opportunity that just happened uh, or just happened to happen this was set up you know uh, Neil Bush was on the uh, security firm uh, that had control of the uh, World Trade Center up until 9 10 2000 Lieutenant Shine please stand by sir you and I have to take our final break for this hour Exxon Nation what you're hearing is the truth there is no fiction in what the lieutenant is saying at all one eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free. Lieutenant Shine and I will be back on the other side of this break as the Exxon continues live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, exclusively on the Talk Star Radio Network, Exxon TV, and on Shortwave. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation. Whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, how we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Welcome back to the Exxon. Lieutenant Eric Shine is our special guest. And first of all, Lieutenant, thank you very much for being with us these uh these two uh, segments on the show, it's uh, been an eye-opener to many people, and uh, thanks for what you're doing. 
Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Like, and and I'd like to come back on again. It's some of the things that I could. Uh, one of the things I want to get out, because this will really blow you away, and this goes back to ancient Rome. They carried on the same practices. Many of the things that we're seeing today are, are from that time period, if not even well before. They've been going on for a very long time, and they're passed on and, and used as you know confidence games, for want of a better term. Uh, they're stealing the death benefits of soldiers and sailors and federal officers and federal personnel the games uh, uh, not only insuring the soldiers now, in Vietnam it was $100,000, and that was the same scam that went on there. When the body count went up and the accountability went down, corrupt judges, lawyers, and politicians came in and stole the death benefits, put it in their own pocket, rather than going to the family or to the trust or paying off the debt of the individual. They're doing the same thing now. They uh, $240,000, I think, was the initial uh, act from Congress, and they bumped it to like 440. The soldiers can supplement it up to 600 thousand dollars with private insurance. And think about that. Not only are you a getting private insurance as a you know public servant, military officer, but you're also disclosing private privilege information as you know a military or federal personnel or officer. Uh, these individuals, it's tied to the Abramoff scandal, where he was actually doing the same thing with the Indians and actually had gone back to the second tribe that lost the gaming rights and uh, uh, set up death benefits for them and had the benefits paid out into his own private trust. Two women out here in L.A. just got bagged for the same thing. They were insuring homeless people. These are confidence games that are working their way down from the top, showing up on the street, and these guys are pulling it at such a level. That's the kind of people, they're members of a death cult, and they have to be removed from public office, whether it's in... Uh, the government, or even in corporations, because at some point, even in corporation, uh, you know, that is a public office because it affects so many people. Lieutenant, uh, again, thank you very much for being with us, sir, and we certainly do look forward to the next time that you're with us here in the X-Zone. Have a good weekend, Lieutenant, and thanks again. Lieutenant Eric Shine has been our guest uh, this hour. He was also with us Wednesday in the first hour. And starting Monday, the X-Zone archives are 100% Free. We're going to be releasing the, uh, the location so you'll be able to listen to the archives with the compliments of the Exxon Radio Show and our fine sponsors. When we come back, we're going to be speaking to Dalton Walker, who is a very strange rock with very strange properties. And we're going to tell you which website to go to so that you can follow along and see for yourself.